Yeah. Teresa here. A big welcome to you all, especially to the new subscribers. I hope you're going to like what you, you find here. Um, just give it time. I'm sure you will. Well, I hope you do. Um, as you can see, scenes of a beach here. Glenn and I have had a few yes, days away in Eastbourne. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, I took some craft work to do. Once again, forgot lots of... Um, important things but never mind i did manage but i thought before i start you might want to see some scenes of eastbourne mostly the pier i do apologize because this was taken on my phone and um, there's a bit of shakiness here so if um combined with the sea it's making you feel a bit seasick please move on by a couple of minutes because um it doesn't actually get any better but i just thought you might like to have a look at um eastbourne's pier and eastbourne for anyone who's not in the uk is in east sussex it's actually where i lived as a student um when i went to university oh, in the dinosaur days quick glimpse at the hotel room clean and inexpensive but it, it did us now these are the things that i took with me and i literally did grab a handful of bits my feet on the end of the bed um odds and ends of threads bits of fabric you know you might have seen some of these odds and ends before from my rag bag and these really are scraps and a way of using up your scraps so i thought um you know i'll just take some of those and see what happens as long as i've got the threads there and those two from the scrap rag bag or the thread rag bag um nothing goes to waste now the idea is to put some of these scraps together in no particular way you can see it's a variety of fabric all different textures there's some linen there's a dark counted thread um elsewhere there's bits of cotton i've kept them all pale beige and white now i've tried to st well i have started sewing them together here i've just place um a couple on e over each other overlapping them some big some small all different pieces as you can see i'm just going to secure them with some running stitch um you've seen those embroidered bits before now these um i'm ashamed to say <laughs> i've taken off the hotel pillar slips um they're no good to bat man or beast. They weren't doing anything. They were just on the inside. So um, they're not even going to be noticed that they're missing. Um, but it's such lovely fabric. And there are a couple of leaves on them. And I thought I can use those. I can really use those. Uh, you can see the leaf there. A little bit of lettering. This is a vegetable bag that I carry stuff around in. And already I can see that I might be cutting out that onion there. Because it's a beautiful colour. I've just bought this as well from a charity shop earlier on today. It was 50p. My goodness, look at it. 50p. Our charity shops in the UK are extremely expensive. So this was a real bargain. Now I've ca I'm carrying on here. Um, making up these little bits of I don't know what to call them really overlapping pieces of waste but that's far too starchy so I must come up with something else but yeah all odds and ends no idea what I'm going to do with them but it's something nice to do while I'm away now it did cross my mind I could perhaps use the lace from the charity shop as a background fabric but um, I'm not so sure, and it seems such a shame to cover up the lace. Um, I like the idea of doing it in the round, and it's very, very tempting. And as I'm laying it down, I'm thinking, yeah, there's, I did cut out from the, the linen bag. You can see the green pepper, cut the green pepper out, and it's under the leaf. There's a little bit of embroidery that you have seen before. I've used that before. I had two pieces over and that's the first one but I do actually like that um, that look I do like this a great deal but I'm not sure it's for this project 
and I'm loath to cover the lace up so um, I need to come up with another idea and if I use that I'm going to have some of these over well I'd really like to use them all that's the second piece of um, vintage hand embroidery there um, so that goes way back but yeah I like that but I'm not going to use that I think I'm going to come up with another idea um, I did bring some back in fabric just in case but um, yeah, yeah it's very tempting and I really can't make my mind up I don't think the bed sheet's doing it any favours so the next thing to do is if I'm not going to have it in the round I need to consider placing them side by side also like this look because it's quite random and you get a view of the the uh, different textures at a glance as you can see there already your eye isn't going round in a in the round so to speak it's all linear so your eyes taking it in better and you can see the shiny against the dull the long against the short you've got all the design principles there that we work with and I'm so pleased that I've decided to mix the stronger colours like the green and the orange there's the brown as well and there's a slight touch of red there um, I'm pleased that I've decided to use those as well and that you can see some other little off cuts that I've since found um, at home after coming back from Eastbourne and I've decided to use those as well and the onion you can see the onion from the the vegetable bag there it is in the center um, and I think it adds something otherwise it might have been too uh, too pale and a bit washed out looking so I'm quite pleased now this these blocks you probably recognize those from the edge of large embroideries and I've got some pink ones there as well and those are nice colors and I think I might exploit those colors a little bit as well once again that's the piece that you you've already seen um, and I've laid that on the top of the the pieces that are overlaid specifically so that doesn't get lost some of them I have cherry picked a little bit to make sure that you can see them and I actually like this background color because it matches all these beiges and there's little bits of uh, background color there pink um it goes with the green here or the blue and the green there and that little bit of rust so once I've put them down once I've put them down I should tack them and then decide how I'm going to secure them I have an idea at the moment that I will do it all in hand stitch oh this is um taking on a circular look I didn't mean it to take on a circular so um, I'm going I will spend some time just making sure they're all in I'd like to keep some nice spaces um, in between like here keep the negative shapes um, so look at that that lovely shape there and that one there and here so th that's my next step I can see this is going to take more time than I imagine I've tacked all these pieces down uh, on the sewing machine actually and I've just clipped them so they haven't been done around the edges um, to totally secure them just clip now you can do this on your sewing machine or you can do it as I normally do that just clipping it with big big stitches I had my sewing machine here so I thought well I might just as well use it so I'm now at home as you've obviously guessed now I'm going to start um, sewing these on with decorative stitchery so I'm using three strands of thread and I'm I put a knot in the back okay and I'm using a nice thin sharp needle with an eye big enough to take that thread so I think I might start with a running stitch um that's a nice one to start with start with this one and I'm just going to do a running stitch all the way around the edge 
Although I'm actually tempted to do an over sew. But I think I'll start with running stitch just to warm up a little bit. Just want to make sure that's under the camera lens. Yeah. So we've all done running stitch. Some call it slow stitch. Other call it other things. It's got so many names. But I'm doing the running stitch all the way around. And I'll probably carry on and do the running stitch around some of the others. And that's all I'm doing. I haven't given this much thought, actually. I don't know if I want to go round the individual shapes or treat this as one shape. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm going to give that a bit of thought, actually. And then I will make a start on the others. And hopefully I'll have something substantial to show you when, um, when I've done a bit more. It didn't take me long um, to realise I'd made a mistake with the running stitch. So I, untook, I undid it. I only did a couple more stitches and those that you already saw. I took it out and I thought, no, I love the colour. I'm keeping the colour. But I just didn't like the, the running stitch. Um, so I'm using a feather stitch. So that is what I'm now going to do. As I said before, I'm going to go round the shape. And just play it by ear for a while and see what's, what develops from that. But I feel quite pleased that I've taken the running stitch out. It didn't add anything, whereas I think this uh, definitely adds something. So all the pieces have been held down now. They've all been secured with a really nice feather stitch all the way round. Uh, I've often changed the colour to a darker um, a darker colour that's a dark pink believe it or not and this is a lilac I don't think it's made much difference but I thought it might have added just a little something but I can see that um, on the screen especially sometimes you can see more on the screen um, then you can actually look in in front I'm going to make that a little bit bigger where are we here we go Wrong glasses time. Right, a little bit bigger there. And you can see how um, it's been held down. I'm going to choose a colour, a deep colour, from here. That's a nice dark blue. We've got green there and a nice brown. Um, there's also a very nice yellow here as well. I need to have a strong colour now, I think to highlight some of these wonderful negative shapes here it's beginning to look very pale very pink and I, I want it to look a bit more rich than that I'm not sure how to do it I don't want to use black because black there well that's a, a contrast it might be too too much of a contrast of course there's a very deep purple there as well so um, as I say I have got choices when it comes to the colour but what I'm also going to do to secure some of these floppy bits here which I actually like but they're not practical um, I'm going to do what I normally do in a situation like this and I'm going to put the nets in the net net right the way across it and I think I'm going to need three bits to go across here now this net is an open really open um, wide mesh and it's white it's very fine so it isn't actually going to change very much about what's underneath it isn't even going to change the color so the only thing I want it for is to hold it all down in place because these are very frayable that's one of the issues when you're working with bits and pieces from your rag bag um, and using anything and everything you're using a selection of different textures um, fabrics with different properties and some are frayable and some aren't that's not fraying at all but if you look at some of the like the Ada here and some of the linens they are really frayable and they're frayed so much that I think they're not going to take a, a great deal more fraying so I'm going to use my net over it I should tack the net down 
uh, I've got to do it in strips because that's how the net is bought on a roll and I will tack it down all the way around the edge just in a big uh, just in a big um, tacking stitch and then I'll just probably tack it across like that to hold it to stop it dancing and then I will do my stitchery on top I think at the moment I'm thinking of working in a little running stitch around here in a nice deep colour as I said just to exaggerate these beautiful shapes but as yet I'm not sure what colour I'm going to use so that should be <laughs> interesting so that's the next thing I'm going to do and then as soon as I have something to show you how these shapes are taking on then I'll get back and I'll show you I've, uh, well, I'm working a small chain stitch all the way around the inside of the negative shapes I'm just going to show you how far I've got I've chosen a blue after all I thought the blue would go nice now this is how far I have got at the moment it isn't finished but I thought I'd just uh, let you see um, the best, let's have a look the best way to do this right there we go so there we are now that's what it's looking at like so far the blue chain stitch around the inside of the negative shape so it isn't touching the fabric shape itself but it's just picking out the outline of the inside of the plain pink shape okay now some of these might be too big like this one now uh, that's making me feel a bit uneasy because it is too big here so I'm not going to do anything about it yet because I'm hoping the top stitchery will maybe um, alter the the nature of that great big shape there but so far so good now I'm going to carry on I've almost finished outlining in blue I'll make that a little bit smaller there we go that back we go so um, yeah I'm quite pleased with that I think I might carry on for another line or two inside possibly still with chain stitch maybe some running stitch maybe alternate the chain and the running here like I've started to do here actually uh, the first line was was running stitch and then I've used the chain stitch might carry on with that idea so the next one would be running but we'll see how it, uh, it looks when I've actually finished because just by finishing off this little bit here this area here um, it's going to make the rest of it look quite different it also needs a press as well I think I've pressed the back of that and then um, we'll take it from there and see what happens I'm not sure about what color I'll use after this it will probably be another color from the background that's a nice color that orange color um, I just feel that the pink is very much in my face at the moment and this is someone who loves pink so be interesting to see what I do there brown blue maybe a green but anyway we'll see I'm going to carry on now and the next time you see this hopefully you never know the negative shapes might be finished and it'll be time to start the stitchery on these very very positive shapes I've now added um, lots of red cross stitch I thought that looked nice and it just it just lessens the pink actually I've added some green feather stitch all the way round I've, I've followed the blue stitches all the way round now as you can see here on the screen I've also varied the sizes of the cross stitch I've got some big and some small so I'm bringing in our contrast in size the, another design element I'm not sure where it's going next what I'm going to add now I think it's too red I will bring a little bit more red down here because the bottom bit hasn't been touched at all so I need to 
bring the a little bit more red down but not too much just to make it a bit more um bit more comprehensive if you like some uh, fly stitches in brown um i haven't once again i haven't put those in all the patches only in some now the blanket stitch here I've added in three squares, but I can see by looking at this, I'm going to have to bring some more of the yellow blanket stitch down here. Now, I'm in the process at the moment of tacking down some embellishments here, some applique, and they're really, really pretty. I think there was just a little bit of bling missing from this. That one's very nice. So I don't want to overdo it with the bling, but I can see when it's been hanging up, as it has been today, that there's there's something missing. Now, this was supposed to be a very short hotel, um, just for fun um, project. And it's turned into something quite enormous. And I must admit, I'm quite anxious to finish this so I can start Louise's challenge. Um, I'm quite excited about that and I need to finish this. So hopefully I will finish this later today. Well, there's not much of today left. It's now 10 past nine in the evening. I shall spend a couple of hours on it and try and finish it tomorrow. These are very nice. Um, there's a lot of things in there. There's a lot of things I could do. But to me, it's not a major project. It's, it was really just something, as I've just explained, for fun. But I've got absorbed in it and I can see where it could go and how I could finish it off and add more embellishments and do something more. I've added the French knots to that um, and this piece here. But I really don't want to do that. I'm, as I said, I'm anxious now to finish this. This... Um, <laughs> it was just a little bit of nonsense really but it's taking over my life so i need to finish this tomorrow and if that means sitting up until three o'clock in the morning um because i'm here alone at the moment so i've got no interruptions whatsoever then i'll have to sit up to three o'clock and finish it because it's I finished the front I haven't done much more to it than the last time you saw it but what I have done now I've ironed some interfacing on the back of this just to give it a nice stiffness and now I'm just about to sew a little square of fabric it's actually the same fabric um, from that I've used on the front so I'm now going to sew this tack it all the way round and I have started here I'm going to do the four edges and it is um, wrong side to wrong side okay so it's wrong side to wrong side and I'm now going to tack all the way around it and I will possibly um, machine sew around it later I found an old tote bag and I'm sure many of us have these old tote bags hanging around at one time they were really really fashionable um so i found this one i actually bought it in a charity shop some time ago just back and front so i've taken it to pieces this is one side of it and from the other side i've taken off the top band now the top band has the handles there so what I'm going to do is turn this around. I'm going to put right side to right side along one of the edges and machine sew this as close to the top of the band here. If I take that down slightly, you just might be able to see the edge of the band here. I'm going to machine sew that down there and then turn it over. So the band will now form part of the top of what is now going to be a bag, okay? And then I'm just going to face, put this right side on here and so run three edges. That's the plan at the moment. Uh, let's just see if it works out. 
Now, there's an awful lot more I could do to this. If it had been a major project, I would have done a lot, lot more, like filling in some of these, maybe embroidering on the bits of exposed canvas and here. But because it isn't a major project, it's just, as I said earlier on, for fun, I'm going to leave it like that. Now, as you might expect, <laughs> I haven't left it like this. I have indeed turned it into a bag. So I'm going to pull it down very gently because it won't go into my screen. It won't fit my screen, I should say. Now, here are the handles from an, the old or an old tote bag. So I took the handles off, as you know. I think I explained this. So these are the handles from an old tote bag. There is the back background to the front and here is the back of an old tote bag. So all I've done is sew them together around here. I've double I've sewn them twice around the edge, two rows along here, and then I've gone over the edges with a zigzag. So and just to finish, I did some top stitching up here, a couple of rows. So this is now the finished project. A crochet bag, a knitting bag, no zip. Very, very easy to do. Uh, let me see if I can straighten that up a bit. Yeah, it doesn't look very straight there. Let's put that there. That's better. I think it's the camera. I've not the camera, so everything's looking a bit wonky. So, one bag started just for fun I can see a bit of tack in there needs to come out just for fun in a hotel room um, so yeah it's got some memories on this now so there's the pillows and bits from blankets uh, hidden bits that won't be missed um, and all odds and ends the odds and ends I took and snip it here snip it there so it hasn't cost anything even the thread was one of those jungle threads that you get where it's all like a, a, just a mass of spaghetti thread so all done all finished hope you like it as I say it could have been a major project but um, I'm now anxious to start Louise's project I particularly like that one actually yeah anyway I hope you enjoyed that um, please tick it like it if you do and um, if you haven't subscribed yet perhaps you think of subscribing but if not don't worry it's no problem okay so take care everybody hope to get back with projects quite soon um, I'm trying to get out more but it's it, it's so chaotic here at the moment with one thing or another and the decorating isn't getting done oh it's a real pain but anyway it's my pain and it's fun <laughs> okay so best wishes to you all and take care wherever you are um i'll speak to you later on facebook take care